To date, we are aware of more than 100,000 species of poisonous animals. They have become highly specialized through their evolution. We now know that both animals on land and in the water have a huge variety of different poisons. Each of these coral fish has different weapons which enable it to survive. Some sea creatures are extremely dangerous to humans. If we leave the land and go into the water, it can be dangerous for us. That's because in principle, we're land dwellers. But the sea hasn't actually made such an impact on us humans, especially as we came to it relatively late in our evolution. But of course we've met poisonous animals there that are among the most dangerous of all. Think of jellyfish. There are jellyfish, for example, in the South Pacific, which are deadly. You only have to touch them to receive so much poison that your heart stops in minutes. On land, we have snakes, and these cause the most human casualties worldwide. Three to four million people are bitten by snakes each year, and around 100,000 die. However, Humans don't actually appear on the usual menu of prey for these poisonous animals. No snake wants to eat us. No snake intends to hurt us in any way. It just defends itself when we enter its habitat. Then, of course, we can expect that the poisons it produces, for other purposes, may have fatal consequences for us. In Cologne, the zoo is located in the middle of the city. For nearly 150 years, visitors have admired animals from around the world. Toxic and non-toxic ones. In the wild, they have to search for prey and find food to survive. And they need their own special ways of defending themselves against their enemies. Evolution can take many different paths. Elephants have no natural enemies. In the wild, they are potential prey for animals such as lions or crocodiles only when they are young. Biologist Thomas Ziegler is curator at the Cologne Zoo. He is also deeply involved in the zoo's conservation project in Vietnam. He has a predilection for smaller animals, especially amphibians. Basically, there are two types of poisonous animals. One type is the actively poisonous animals that have special structures where poison is formed. They have special glands with instruments to introduce poison into the prey or the predator, such as fangs in venomous snakes. And the other type consists of passively poisonous animals, which include poison dart frogs, for example. These don't have any special structures to deliver the poison with, so they can only contaminate a predator through direct contact with it. 90% of all poisonous animals live in the tropics. The mission golden-eyed tree frog is passively poisonous, as are the extremely poisonous cane toad and the cleverly disguised midwife toad. Amphibians all have many glands on their skin because they all live in a moist environment where you're always in danger of being overrun by fungi or bacteria and finally succumbing to them. So the primary function of these glands is to protect the frog from that. Their toxicity only emerged later in evolution as a protection against predators, as happened with the poison dart frog. Poison dart frogs in the wild produce an extremely potent toxin, batrocotoxin. The quantity of venom in a single frog can kill 20,000 mice or 10 people. Its conspicuous warning colors send a clear message, take care. That's something its natural enemies really remember. If they've ever had a bad experience with this frog, they won't go there again. This is the principle of passive toxicity. It lets the predators have a first attempt so that they really get the message and know, I can't eat that unless I want to feel pretty bad afterwards. The most densely populated habitats for poisonous animals are coral reefs. A huge variety of cocktails are used in the competition for survival. 
Often only tiny amounts of poison are emitted as a warning signal. What look like plants are often poisonous animals, against which the clownfish protects itself in a symbiosis with the sea anemone. The animals have refined venomous cells to shoot small harpoons into their prey. Or they can drive away enemies of their own species, or different ones from a firmly anchored position on the ocean bed. When one thinks of reef habitats and seawater, it's coral reefs that always come to mind, where every inch of space is greatly valued. And there you get surveillance strategies. Corals use these strategies, as do anemones and jellyfish, which are well known for their nerve poisons. One of the most effective and deadly marine poisons is found in the pufferfish, of which there are about 100 species worldwide. In Japan, these refined killers are considered a delicacy. Animal keeper Peter Klaas has worked at the Cologne Zoo for over 20 years. He has devoted body and soul to his animals. The bite of some centipedes is very painful, but non-lethal. In the wild, they kill their prey with the biting mechanisms on their head during nocturnal forays. Depending on the type, centipedes can develop shinon, hydrocyanic acid, or benzaldehyde. Millipedes produce their poison in certain glands. The gland outputs are located on the sides of these animals' bodies, one on the left and one on the right side of each body ring. There are purely defensive toxins, that is, they're mainly used to deter predators. This means that any animal that has tried to eat a millipede, even if the millipede died, will be able to pass on the information that these animals are extremely foul-tasting or foul-smelling. Peter Klaas also has stick insects in his realm. One of them deserves a very special mention as a poisonous animal. This particular specimen is a so-called peppermint stick insect. It also has two venom glands in the neck behind the breast armor, and these spray its enemies with the toxins which the animal itself produces, but also takes in through the plants it eats. And you can see a beautiful demonstration of this when you touch the animal. There is a puff of spray, and if that gets in your eyes, it's most unpleasant and tastes very bitter. Tarantulas can live up to 25 years. Peter Klaas has become especially fond of them. He is considered a pioneer in the keeping of tarantulas and has also published two books about them. There are around 900 species and their venom is primarily used, as with all spiders, as a digestive aid. Spiders cannot chew and so have to liquefy prey in their mouths so they can absorb it into their extremely thin esophagus. The tarantula's venom apparatus is located in the chelicerae, which are pincer-like claws with two parts. Here you can see these claws, which are the tools the spider uses to bite its prey and inject its poison. And the second element of the chelicerae consists of this basic part, this thickened piece, where the venom glands are found. Analyses of the poison of all the tarantula species that have been studied to date show that they are much less harmful than commonly assumed. This especially applies to tarantulas, as their size enables them to kill their prey. There are species that have a more poisonous effect, but most are completely harmless, which, by the way, also applies to all spiders in principle. There are about 40,000 different species of spiders, and perhaps a dozen of them are toxic enough to cause problems for humans. Evolution has produced fascinating poisonous animals. For example, this beaded lizard native to North America. Like all other venomous animals, the beaded lizards have developed their chemical weapons in order to survive in the wild. However, only very few of these sometimes highly toxic, refined and exotic killers of the animal kingdom are really dangerous to humans.
especially if you live in Europe. The real poisonous animals here in Europe are bees and wasps. In Germany, 10 to 15 people die each year directly after being stung by a bee or a wasp. In the last 60 years, one man in this country died from a viper bite, in this case the death adder. Unfortunate circumstances brought this about, because it's not usually deadly. But the danger is that people who are allergic react particularly strongly to bees and wasps because of their high allergenic effect and may suffer circulatory collapse within minutes, which is sometimes fatal. By the way, Dietrich Mebs was bitten in his childhood by a beaded lizard. He was lucky and survived.